Okay, hello everybody. I think we're live with you. You're all coming in now. You're very welcome. Um, I'm deeply honored to have a wonderful panel here to talk to you about sales and marketing strategies that you can put into action now to help you get through this crisis. Because we've got to stay optimistic. We've got to stay as a community. We've got to work together. And I honestly believe that we're going to come through this stronger than we went into it because I can see humanity coming back to the world. I can see our politics has been out here and I can see stuff coming down, back into the center. So thank you for joining us. I'm gonna hand over now to the chair for this discussion, Mary Fist Taylor, and she will introduce the team and have a great webinar. Thank you, Ronan. And thank you guys for joining in. And um, I'm just so glad we have this place and this opportunity to share and talk. Um, as Ronan has said, and all of us are, I think are messaging, we're stronger together. And this is such a cool time to watch this industry come together, not just here where I am in the US, but globally, as you're gonna see with this amazing panel today. Um, you know, we're all in the same place. And I don't know that we've ever had any experience like this. I certainly have it in my life. I don't think I'm probably one of the older ones on this panel. So um, I just, we've never seen anything like it. And to see this group come together and be, be so giving and sharing during this time of very much uncertain things, I, it's just overwhelming to me. So I'm going to let this panel introduce themselves. Um, and we'll start right here with you, Brian. Hi folks, uh, my name's Brian. I am based in Southwest Scotland in Ayrshire. Uh, been a full-time photographer for 14 years now, uh, shooting things like weddings, portraits, but also a lot of events where um, shooting and printing. And I'm looking forward to discussing what we have to discuss tonight. Thank you, Brian. Alison. My name is Allison Tyler Jones and I'm based in the US in Arizona and I run a portrait studio that specializes in children and families. And how long Allison? How long have you been? Uh, 15 years. 15 years. All right. And uh, Damien. Hello. Good evening everybody. Uh, or it's where I am. I'm in the northwest of England uh, in Cheshire. I've been doing this for 34 years now. Um, I know I don't look old enough. <laughs> Not at all, I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and we've, we've lived through some hard times. Things haven't always been easy. And it is heartwarming to see everybody sort of try and pull together and make a difference. Thank you, Damien. Darty. Hi, everybody. Darty Hines from Pennsylvania uh, in the US, obviously. Um, and I am a full-time photographer, uh, <laughs> have been for about 25 years. I'm, I would say, semi-retired now um, and running uh, the SYNC Conference and SYNC Sports Conference. Um, and I am just super honored to be here and just hope that we can provide a little bit of hope for everybody today. Thanks, Darty. Shakira. <laughs> 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 Hi, everybody. I'm Kira Derryberry uh, from Tallahassee, Florida. I run a portrait studio full time um, that we specialize in children and family and also commercial headshots and commercial advertising photography. Um, we um, I've been in the business for the last decade. I'm also on the uh, uh, PPA board of directors and I'm happy to help however I can. Thanks, Kira. Marnie. Hey, I'm Marnie. Um, I'm from Elizabethtown, Kentucky here in the US. Um, I have a family and senior business here um, and we are in our 10th year. So I'm excited to be here and share with you guys some of the things we've been up to. Happy to have you here. Steve. Good morning. I'm Steve Separato from Australia. I um, build wedding and portrait studios um, in the US, Australia and New Zealand, um, now starting in the UK. And I've been in this business for 20 something years, way older than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> Thank you for being here. It's first thing in the morning for Steve. We have all, all times of day here um, from first thing in the morning to retiring for the evening, right guys? It's a lot of the time zones are being crossed. And uh, last but certainly not least, Catherine. I'm Catherine Langsford. I have a portrait studio in Vancouver, Canada. I've been in business for 21 years and, uh, you know, ha have been through some ups and downs and hopefully, you know, can share some wisdom, but I'm just, it, it's so nice that we're all here together and, and I, I look forward to learning from all of you as well. 
Thank you so much, guys. And thank you again for all your time and effort. I know we've been working on some, some great topics to bring to you guys today, and we hope you're gonna, this guy's gonna take away some actionable items. I'm Mary Fisk Taylor. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, 26 years portrait uh, studio, still do some weddings, um, and also co-own an event studio with my mom and sister where we do boutique volume schools um, and events. So staying busy, doing things. I'm also on the PPA board of directors with Kira and, and um, great friends are hopefully gonna be great friends with everybody on this panel. So thanks again to Ronan for putting this together. Um, I wanna start, um, Brian, with you, if you don't mind. Okay. And you know, one of the things you talked about was um, having that statement of reassurance on social media and letting your customers know that you're here. Could you kind of expand on that a little bit for us and what you mean by that and how we can do that and what that result will be for us if we practice those best standards. Oh, th thanks for that one. Right. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the statement of reassurance is, is important. Um, there has just been within the, U the UK some fairly significant changes on the status of, we're not quite at lockdown, but the advice is to stay in your homes, etc. It's almost a kind of run and hide uh, mentality uh, that we're seeing. We're kind of really in the first day of, of, of it. Um, so there's a lot of run and hide. Um, as businesses, we can't afford to run and hide. And we cannot be away from where our, our client base is. Um, this is not the end times. Okay, this will pass. Okay, we will all come through it and our clients are still going to be there and they need to know that we're still going to be there. I love that and you're exactly right and it's so important. I, I can say that we sent an email to all of our existing clients on Monday and I got 17 emails from people just saying thank you so much and it was just we're here if you need anything, if you need a a trip to the grocery or the pharmacy or you know a child who needs a lunch because they're not in school we're here we want to support this community who supported us and i was overwhelmed by 17 emails one person i haven't heard from in 12 years they moved just saying thank you and i know that that's going to keep us at top of mind when we are moved through this which we know we will so there, there's a, there's also if I, if I may add um Please. an aspect of um, seem to be out there, not only to our existing clients, um, a friend of mine, hello Kev if you're watching, I uh, got a, quite a good response today from, and he put out a very, very professional, um, I'm still here, uh, I'm a professional photographer, I am, this is what I intend to do. Um, and people seeing that, not only people that had booked him, people seeing that he had that professional attitude, um, thought, well, this guy's not afraid. This guy's a professional. He's going to be around. He's not one of the, uh, we have a phrase, weekend warriors. Um, he, he's going to be, he's a business and we want to book our wedding business. We want to book our prom business. We want to book whatever business with him when this is over because we might be booking for 2021, 20, 2022, 20, etc. It, it will have passed. This will be a memory. I love that. Thank you so much, Brian. Allison. You always have so many great things to share, <laughs> but this is something that really hit a note with me and I, I'm going to, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot here, but you said it, yeah. so I'm going to go for it. Yeah. You said something about, should we diversify our product offerings, especially if you have positioned yourself at the top of the market? Um, do we need to lower the barrier of entry or do we need to worry about, you said, gutting our brand? And I thought that was really smart because I think many of us are in that position, whether it's a wedding photography or a portrait photography how do we react now and deal with that? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I have several, because I, I think like everybody, we are on a roller coaster ride, and as we get new news, we kind of cycle in and out of like, this is gonna be fine, that's not gonna be fine, you know? <laughs> and so I really feel like overall, like a, a, the blank, my blanket answer to that is, right now, tone is everything. Um, I feel like, the, the emails that I'm getting from businesses that I patronize or things that I'm seeing on, on Instagram feels like a lot of grasping and a lot of people like, hey, we're giving 20% off, come and see us. And it's like, my clients are home with their kids trying to figure out how they're gonna 
A, keep them entertained. B, is their husband even going to have a job? Is their portfolio, stock portfolio just, you know, I mean, like fear is just rampant right now. So, you know, like we say, when somebody makes a joke about something that's really not that funny too soon, I feel like there's a lot of this is a little too soon as far as really putting things, offers and that sorts of things for me, putting that out there in the back of my mind going forward is the thought of how are we helpful? I love, I think Mary, what you like, I, I'm writing down, get text for email from Mary. because <laughs> that, that is exactly what I came to yesterday morning when I was just kind of having a moment of contemplation and very high anxiety is just thinking, how can I help? Because actually, you know, I think for the most part, none of us are on the knife's edge of like, we are going to starve and so how really there, and, but there are people that are. And so how can we turn around and just help? And right now we're just going to have to be in this for a moment and we're going to come out of it, but, but we just don't know. And so, I, and I think it's okay to not know and think about those things going forward. We may have to diversify our product offerings. One of the things I was thinking of that was act, maybe actionable was my session fee is $1,200. 300 of that is my session fee. The remainder goes towards a product credit. Maybe when this is over, maybe we'll go to a $300 session fee with no product credit for a little while just to lower the barrier for entry. But once I started thinking about all of that, I kind of got to a place of fear and like, <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? I don't have to worry about that right now because we're, we're down and we're just going to be in this right now. And we're going to look around and see who we can help and not worry about being out there like, you know, hashtag shop local and come and help me and buy gift cards from me. It's not about me. It's about them. And how can we support them? That's my thought. I agree. And I think you can dual message that I, I, I do like, I, I love what you're saying. And I do, I could not agree more that I think lowering or discounting or doing that right now to our product is the worst idea because I think in the long run, it's really hard to come out of that. I think we saw that when the recession hit, a lot of people did that and they kind of discounted themselves out of business in my opinion. However, this isn't a recession. This is a V crisis. <laughs> we are going to come out of this a lot faster than we, we do. We did a recession, but um, you know, being, being engaged and not being afraid and sending positive messages. I think we all are going to agree on that is, is super important. So, um, so thanks Allison. I, I, I love that. And I think we'll probably continue to that conversation. Um, you know, Damien, I love what you said earlier. You were talking about actually, not being doom and gloom and, and, and some positive things going on. And whereas we don't want to just continually ask for business on our social media, I think it's important to balance that between a give, give, and then an ask, you know, there are ways that we could pre-sell gift cards or maybe partner with other businesses and do that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Cause you'd mentioned it earlier. So I'd love to hear more about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, there's two sides of the coin here for me. What I said to you earlier was I have the privilege of, of mentoring about 50 businesses in the UK. And the initial um, reaction was, was doom and gloom. But we were starting to report throughout the membership today, our membership, that people are um, getting in touch with studios and offering support, saying, look, we still know you're there. Um, people are buying Mother's Day vouchers. Uh, it's Mother's Day next weekend, I think, in the UK. Um, and th there is that support. However, um, you know, my, I think we need to go back a little bit further, if I'm totally honest, because I don't think this is just about um, putting this sort of sales spin on things. Um, I, I think we need a three-stage plan. I think the first stage of the plan seriously should be for every business and every person to assess their financial situation, because that will be different um, depending on who you are, where you are within the strata of the industry, how new your business is, where you are geographically. And there will be people that need to, uh, photographers are historically horrendous at knowing their figures. Certainly in the UK, I don't know if it's the same in, in uh, the Antipodes and in, in, in America. Um, from my point of view, figures are king. If you don't know your figures, then there's, there's a big problem because figures never lie to you. They always tell you the truth. And if we assess our figures first, we then know what we need to do. In the UK, 
can we ride out a fortnight can we ride out a month can we ride out a quarter and once you know where you stand and you're not making decisions emotionally but you're making decisions factually then you can look at the immediate business and go on to stage two and assess the business um, stage that you're in now can you reach out to old customers and maybe make an offer can you stimulate um, the industry you know your your local industry to get people to uh, come in and buy to, to look at if you need new product lines etc 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 and then last but not least then there's this time we've been gifted um, it, it, and that's how I'm choosing to look at it mm, that that, you know, we, we all have um, things we want to do things that we put to the back burner things that we think we should be implementing in our businesses well if we're on lockdown now is the time to do those things. It, 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 it's the gift of time. I mean, I've done stuff today. I've actually just changed my profile picture, um, which I've been trying to do for literally years, but it takes a long time to Photoshop something that looks like <laughs> um, So it, it's given me time and it's given me, me the ability. And I, I, I don't think the situation is quite as dire as we believe it is yet. But I, I think unless we do those three things, except, you know, assess our own financial situation, assess where the business stands now, and then work out what can we do with the little bit of silver lining that we've got, then we're just going to go round and round in circles like photographers always do. The trouble with our industry is we all tend to be creative and therefore the business side of our brains tends to sort of wander away a little bit and it just needs a little bit of taking a step back, take a breath, reassess, plan, implement. Oh, wow. I love that. And, you know, if you don't have a handle on your finances and your numbers, then you have the gift of time, which I'm going to use that. I love that. Um, to figure it out because we've got time. That's, that's a really great point. So thank you so much. Darty, I want to hear about social media. I know that you are quite the expert on it. I'll say that just because I, I think you are, but um, give us some, some takeaways or some actions we can use with social media right now. Absolutely, happy to. Um, the main thing I think we got to remember is even though right now we're all kind of struggling a little bit, we're going to get through this. And when we do, we still need to be seen. So we can't give up on social media and posting things right now because the way the algorithm works is if you're not out there, no one's going to see you. So you still got to be posting. You still got to be help, you know, um, sharing and liking and commenting and, post and putting things out to yourself um, that people are going to want to share and like and comment on as well. Um, so I've got a couple of tips. I'm kind of more of like a, you know, these are some things we should be doing right now kind of a person. Um, so, you know, and I'm, and I, 100% still believe we've got to plan these things now and do these things now so that we're still in everybody's faces later. So one of the things I was thinking as on social media that you could do, a good example is our local pizza joint here. We're in a very small town. So our local and our school's out uh, like a lot of people are. And a lot of kids, you know, they don't have the opportunity to get, you know, they're not getting a school lunch and et cetera, et cetera. A lot of lower income people as well. So the local pizza joint here is, giving a personal pan pizza and a bottle of water to any school age kid. So oh. that to me is something that as a small business owner, I'd want to share that and help that piece of joint with that conversation and getting that out on social media to my followers as well. So I'm looking for those kind of things um, to be able to share and put out there into the world. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to do two things. One, it's going to obviously help the community. And I think that we all need to be for our local community communities right now. Um, and then the second thing it's going to do is in the future, when that pizza joint may need a photographer or they may need something else, they might reach back to us or they might share our post that we're posting later in the future. So we're trying to build those relationships right now that's going to kind of help us after this crisis is over. Um, and then another thing I think everybody should be doing right now uh, is when you're posting, there's a couple different things I wanna say about posting right now. Um, Number one, obviously, when we're sharing or posting, making sure that that's coming from reliable sources. The worst thing we want to do as a personal person or as a business person is the worst thing we want to do is share things that are not true. 
Um, and even sharing things that are not timely because when you think about how fast everything's moving right now, we could be sharing something that was posted two or three days ago that's no longer relevant or is no longer even you know, true. Um, so we gotta be careful and look at those things, you know, cause I think a lot of times we see stories, you know, oh, so-and-so went through this and here's her story. And so we go, oh, let's share that. But then we look at it later and realize, you know what, that story was maybe two days old or a week old and it's not really relevant or true anymore. So let's make sure that we're sharing content that is um, reliable um, it's coming from proper sources because we don't want to do that even on your personal page um, because your personal page and your business page are connected in so many ways, especially if you're in a small town. People know that if you're from Studio X, you are running both accounts. They, they connect that. Um, so we want to make sure that we're our personal page and our business page is sharing reliable sources. And then one of the things that a lot of social media um, gurus are doing right now is they're recommending that you post things that um, are what they would call shareable or savable. So especially um, on Instagram, um, when you post things that you can, that people will save, you know, how you can click the little uh, bookmark icon and you can mm -hmm. save things. Um, that is what they're calling a super like. So, you know, back in the day to get seen in the algorithm, we would want to post things that um, people would like or comment or share on. Well, now we're looking to post things that people like, comment, or save. Because when you save it, the algorithm goes, oh, this must be really important to that person. I want to be able to show them more of that later. You know? And so that's what we're trying to do. We're still building that relationship that we need to be in front of their face and to be in that algorithm even when this crisis is over. Because if we're not in the algorithm now, we're definitely not going to be into it later. So I want to make sure we're doing things like that. And even, um, I'm not sure how long we're supposed to talk, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I, well, we'll save some of it for us because I think that's all great information. And I, you're right, content, I mean, the content and the shareable content or the save the savable content, for lack of a better word, which savable is not a word, um, is so, so key. I love that. So thank you. Um, yes. And hopefully we'll get back to some more tips on that. So thank you. Um, thank you, Darty. I appreciate it. Um, Kira, you know, kind of going off that, you know, talking about apps and automation, you're my guru for that. You know, <laughs> what are you, and especially because if you're doing branding or headshots and things like this, I know that you have a really great system that you are maybe marketing, asking and collecting funds by using automation right now, specifically for headshot businesses. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you guys. Um, so, and thank you, Mary. Um, so I, I love what you guys have said about the gift of time, because some of these things I started setting up a while ago and they would take me days to do. And so now is the time for you guys to be really thinking about investing some time in that admin and building things up for your studio. So what Mary's referring to is I use a system called Calendly. I can't say it right. So I'm going to spell it for you guys. C-A-L. E-N-D-L-Y, <laughs> Calendly. Um, and Calendly is an automated online booking system. Um, I don't use this for my family sessions. I use this for my headshot sessions because I was finding that I was spending a, an insane amount of time with this email back and forth over small sessions, you know, one-offs where they would come in and, you know, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of consult time that's necessary for me to do those. Whereas, you know, I need to spend more time with my family clients. So, Calendly, you can go and you can set up automated booking. So you can have it synced to things like your Google calendar. I know it syncs up with other types of calendars, but for me, it was Google. You can have it, um, it, it listens to your Google calendar. So if you book something on your calendar, it knows to block out that time. I was able to set up a couple of days a week that are designated headshot days. So for me, you know, right now, if I, if I had been doing this now, I wouldn't have been overrun with other admin work that I was trying to do during my regular busy, busy time. So now's the time to do something like that. I have a couple of more tips I wanted to share too. Throw them out there. Ask, if you guys us. don't mind. I just felt like I'm just going to spit them all out. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you're not using Adobe Spark, now's the time to get on with Adobe Spark. It comes with your Creative Cloud membership. Mm -hmm. um, you could be spending a lot of time right now creating marketing pieces for the future. You know, I know I spent this afternoon, um, I did set up with Square, I did set up a, a way to do e-gift cards for when the time comes. And I'm partnering up with a, with a charity. And so I'm not discounting anything because I completely agree with that. Don't freak out. Don't panic sell, that sort of thing. But um, but I am partnered with a charity with a, a portion of the proceeds going to, you know, feeding the hunger situation that we've got with a lot of kids out of school right now. So 
I spent the afternoon using Adobe Spark. You can set up your brand in there. So things get really automated, really easy. You can click a button and it, it calls brandifies like the entire thing. Um, so get familiar with Adobe Spark. It's very drag and drop, very easy. You do not have to be a graphic design genius. Um, there's another thing I wanted to remind you guys about. Are you asking your clients for Google reviews? Because this is something that you can add into your automation. So just like the online booking, I've got it set up now where it sends reminders at the end after the session, it follows up automatically and it tells them, you know, we'd love for you to leave us a Google review, but Hey, now's the time that you could be reaching out to your past clients that, you know, were just super, super pleased with your work and just remind you like, Hey, I know we've all got a lot of downtime. We would love it if you'd leave us a Google review during this time where everyone's trying to get back on their feet or just trying to wade their way through it. So, um, you know, it's also a great time to set up uh, customer relationship management, online marketing, email. If you haven't spent the time to set up those things, now is the time to do it. So you've got the time on your hands. It is a gift, um, <laughs> despite what's going on. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, I hope that helps, guys. Um, yeah, absolutely. And thank you. I, I appreciate Karen. You're right. Yeah, and we, we, remind us, what did you say you're using for your, to ask for your reviews? I'm sorry. Oh, um, I actually set it up so you can go um, onto your like Google management for your business okay. and you can get the link directly. And so I'm setting it up every time I touch base with a client after a shoot, I just send them a direct link. I have one more thing though, because those, those links are so gnarly that it creates. They're just super, super long. Yeah. I use a service that's free. It's called bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. Mm -hmm. You can drop in long, nasty links like that, and you can customize the back end of it. So I know it says um, on my reviews, I think it's like bit.ly slash KDP review. And so yeah. it's just real easy for me to remember to tag people with that. So set those things up. That's awesome. I use something called Revenue Jump, um, mm -hmm. and that goes out to every 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 client I, I work with. I then use Revenue Jump to get those reviews, and that really helps keep your. I, I mean, I'm not a guru on any of this at all, but I know it helps with SEO and for all those things. So Revenue Jump's been a really great resource for me. Marnie, let's get to you. I loved your post today. Marnie is doing some such cool things, and like many of us, she's in a smaller town, so she's garnering that attention by following, I would say that 80-20 rule, 80% 80 giving content and great resources and ideas and, and services to your clients and only 20% of that ask. Would you agree with that, Marnie? Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's, if we're talking percentages, yes. Um, we have been, I think most of what we've been doing these past few days has been completely focused on supporting our clients and supporting our local businesses. So we're really um, involved with our downtown area here. And so we have been pushing our local businesses left and right um, and doing whatever we can. Um, we've got a coffee shop next door that's doing drive-through. Um, we're like, here, you can park people behind our car if you need to, you know, it's that kind of thing. Um, whatever we can do to help, we're gonna do. Um, the very first thing that we did for our clients, um, as soon as we heard that schools were closing last week, we sat down. Um, I sat down <laughs> and created a PDF um, of 10 things to do while you're stuck in this little self-quarantine situation. So it's a little PDF guide that we threw together that's all pretty with all kinds of, you know, pictures and that sort of thing. It does not mention photography. I think once we joke about planning for the future and we say, hey, you know, think about what you're going to wear for your next photography session, that's mm -hmm. it. Um, other than that, it is completely just do this with your kids. Go do this little activity. Um, you know, clean out your closets, those kind of things. It's all practical stuff, um, but also very positive and focused on how they can keep themselves sane um, over the next few weeks. Um, I'm trying to think what else we had in there. We kept it really personal to our family just to kind of remind them again who we are. We're a bunch of little weirdos and we like to do um, stuff together. <laughs> so we've got a lot of things in there that we like to do together as a family. So again, just trying to connect with them on a personal level is super, super important. And then today I'll throw in there, we did, um, but there's another local photographer, it's not my idea, Josh Astor, it's all his, um, came up with small business story time. And so we are right now trying to make sure that we're not violating any copyright issues because copyright's super important to me. Um, so we're trying to make sure we've got that all, all taken care of. So we're actually asking authors for permission to read their stories online. Um, so that our parents have something to do. They can set the kid in front of the TV or in front of the Facebook for 10 minutes and let them listen to someone else read them a story so that they can get a cup of coffee and not have to read themselves. Um, it's gotten, these things have gotten so much positive response, I can't even tell you. The email that we sent with that PDF, 
hands down, that is the most response we've ever gotten yeah. from, from an email in 10 years of business. So we know these things are things that people need right now and they're hungry for. It didn't take me but an hour to put together. Um, and it's, it is helping people. And that's really what we want to make sure we're doing through all of this. Um, and again, yeah, it does keep us in the front of their minds later on down the road. Um, but honestly, at this point, that's secondary to us. We just want to make sure we're helping our community. Oh, I love it. Uh, I think, I don't know if you coined the phrase or if, I don't know who, but calling them, I, or maybe Kira was, they called it boredom busters. And that oh, was that was like, Marnie. Yeah, sharing boredom busters with your moms and your families that are stuck at home with these kiddos. I'm I'm not in that position because my kids are all grown up and they 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 left me. So whatever. But um Aww, but here yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to throw that in there. But what yeah. a cool thing and what a what a great way to share with your clients. Steve, I'm excited to get to you and talk about, you know, you talked about um, touching base with your alliances and how we can work together and creating these networks so that when we're ready, we're, we have plans to launch and, and hit the ground running. Want to expand on that for us a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, in a great position where, you know, I've got access to lots of different studios and lots of different geographic areas. And one thing that we're doing is reaching out to all of our alliances and building groups where different businesses that have supported us over the years um, or potential businesses that we're wanting to work with, we can now form groups where we can find out um, what they've got planning or what they're planning to do once the this crisis is beginning to ease off. And let's face it, it you know, it's, it's a crisis right now. So most local businesses are looking for ways to reach out to their clients and support their clients and working together with these businesses to help them um, recover from from all of this has been instrumental in building relationships so i honestly think that the the way through this is to build strong relationships not just with your alliances but also with your clients um, calling them and finding out where they're at just touching base and asking you know how are you are you okay it's amazing the conversations that a lot of photographers are having with their clients um, and people wanting to to connect with somebody because we're not really built for this isolation as as a race we're not built to be isolated so a lot of people want someone to talk to and be it a business owner be it your client and a lot of your clients are in business so finding out where they're at and including them in future plans just being open to the possibility that they may may need help is is really important and we've had lots of people come back and um once we've reached out to them say thank you and then they've been reminded of um that collection that they didn't they didn't lock in when they were with us and we've had quite a few people um ordering out of this conversation we haven't even had to ask them they've said oh by the way when we were in last time um, we left this behind. Can we order it now? So it helps with cash flow, just building those relationships um, with your clients who also own businesses, a lot of them, as well as creating social groups. So people can start to to share what they're going to be doing and people can start to work together. So it's it's really important to keep building those relationships um, with with as many people as you possibly can and make it personal. Pick up the phone. People really um, are looking for that personal touch. I know email will cover a lot more people, but those people that are top of mind are probably those people you should be calling. And it's resulting in some awesome collaboration um, coming out of this. It's resulting in some cash flow right now into the biz into your business. It's resulting in families um, really. I suppose with the right questions, asking a family, you know, what, what's important to them right now and, and giving them tips. I loved, you know, um, all of the, all of this concept of giving, you know, bringing, we've got some people in our group who homeschool. So some tips on how to homeschool, just being out there and, and helping people. I think that's, that's got to be key. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. And so important. And I love what you're saying. Like, I understand that a lot of us are in a position where maybe we're self, 
you know, we're self quarantining or we're social, you know, whatever's going on, but we're not in that place right now in Virginia. I'm not saying we won't beat them in the next hour. We, we just don't know what's ever changing, but we immediately kicked in with virtual consultations and virtual sales. I've had two sales this week. I've, not met my goal for this week, but I've gotten really daggone close. And, and it's because we just asked, we're like, hey, let's just set this up and do this virtually. I don't love doing virtual selling or virtual consultations. I love the face-to-face, -face, but that's not where we're at right now. And so, you know, I have cash coming in right now because I'm just making it easy for people to do business with me right now. And, um, you know, Catherine, I know that you guys are, you guys now are closed. That's where you are in your area. Are you using any of these online? Are you switching to any of these virtual or online ideas or, you know, how are you guys working through that? I know you had a full week of sessions planned and employees and where are you at and what's going on? I think we're all here to be real and say what's going on in our studios. Yeah, well, just like for, you know, some of the other people here, it happened really quickly for us. And yesterday, we're just, you know, we received an announcement that our borders are closed and that everyone should stay home. So, you know, I, the day before that, I had six sessions on the books for this week. So, um, you know, you sort of like take a few minutes to let your brain adjust to like, do they still want to come? Should they not come? Should I go to their house? Like, you know, I, we sort of had all the whole gamut of possible solutions and then we decided to cancel well you know in talks with clients we decided that we should cancel so so what I'm um, I mean just to let you know what we're doing um, I've laid my staff off and uh, you know just looking at the finances of, of keeping the door open even though there's no clients here <laughs> so logistically that's you know I'm, I'm speaking to my landlord I'm, I'm speaking to our mortgage holder. I mean, if we're open, that's what's happening. Um, in terms of business, I, I couldn't agree more with the idea of, I have many clients that are physicians and I'm just thinking about, okay, how, how, how should I reach out to them? I very much like them to know that I'm thinking of them and of their family. I mean, it's just on a human level now. There's right. nothing, there's nothing that's going to bring any revenue in. Nobody's thinking about buying anything. It's, um, I'm, I'm sure it's the same there with the stores being empty and so forth, but here also the streets are empty. There's, there's nobody around. Um, and it's just the last thing on people's minds. Um, so I, I am thinking about, you know, how can I be a human? How can I, I'm a mother, you know, I, I'm a, you know, a lot of these other people are business owners. Okay, sure. Maybe their businesses make, you know, eight figures a year <laughs> yeah, instead of what's happening for mine. But, um, People are suffering in, in, their, in, in, in their ways, and I would like to just let them know I'm here as a person. So I would like to have some sort of, um, I, I'm thinking about how to reach out to my, to my frontline you know, doctor clients, as well as my you know, other, other clients. One idea I had is depending how long we're home and shut down, um, I might go through my archives and, and pull out some old photos and just kind of walk down memory lane. Hey, just sitting here going through stuff. Remember this? Can you believe this was 15 years ago? You know, how are you guys doing? You know, just I love that. It, it's not Great. a pull for anything. It, it is saying hello and, and I remember you and, and I want you to remember me, but it's also just being a human, you know, I I'm hoping that, you know, in conversation with some some other photographers, we've talked about the fact that this could very well bring a renewed gratitude for photography, family, anything that sort of reminds us of what's very important. And I, we may be able to work with that in, in great ways. But just for now, um, I, I'm just thinking of ways I can reach out and ways I can be a I person. love that. No, I think be human. I mean, because you're right. I mean, we're not where you guys are, but I feel like we're going to be there in the next few days. So that's why we're taking advantage of everything we can right now, because we do have the ability. We're not on, we're not on quarantine yet. We're not locked down yet in Virginia, but um, that sharing, I, the other day, one of, I have a lot of friends who are small business owners. And I know that one of my friends is going through a very hard time. She had to shut down her entire you know, a facility. And I went in and I found 
the portraits we did of her kiddos several years ago and I just shared them and I posted them and I'm like, I hope this brightens your day. She shared that like 20 some times, her whole business, it just kept going on and on and on. So I just knew she was hurting and needed a smile. And I knew these portraits of these kiddos at three years old was going to brighten her day. So I'm watching social media to to be able to grasp those, those opportunities. You know, another thing, and this may not work for a lot of studios, but if you run sports or volume or schools, which a lot of us have those studios and a lot of us are missing out on these opportunities. Um, we have, you know, my son's college graduation was just canceled. I'll never see my son graduate from college. It's done. My niece is probably is a senior in high school and she's already lost, you know, prom song contest graduation probably be canceled. Um, these kiddos have prom dresses and they have caps and gowns. So we're just pushing out at our volume studio. When things are better, we're here. Bring that prom dress in, complimentary mini session, complimentary cap and gown session. Now I'm not giving away product, but comp we're here because we want to make sure those memories are captured. So if you know that there are people and clients that are hurting because they're missing these, these life milestone events are being canceled. And trust me to an 18 year old prom being canceled or to my 21 year old, his whole college graduation getting canceled is a big deal. How can you help? And I'm going to ask Ronan to pop in because I want to make sure we can answer some questions. I know we won't be able to answer them all, but Ronan, if you're there, do you want to ask some questions or share some questions because I've not been able to keep up with the feed. I'm sorry. Sure, sure. Let, let me answer, ask just a couple. So, so some people are, are asking um, if I've just launched my business a little while ago and I'm in the middle of doing follow-ups with prospective businesses, what should I do? Hmm. Uh, Steve, do you want to take that? I think who, who feels the most comfortable taking this one? I, he was talking about business to business. He's business to business. Um, oh, business to business. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can, I can talk about it. Go, Allison. Thank um, you. Okay. Because I did, I don't know this will completely address it, like specifically, but um, just kind of back to what everybody was talking about. Um, on the Instagram feeds, I'm looking at like what my fellow business, small business owners are putting out there. And then on, then on the, the and it's like, we're, everything is great here's our deal. Here's what we're doing. And then in the, in the private messaging that we're sending to each other, they're sending the emojis of the head exploding and like, ah, you know, the panda everybody's, on the rocking horse. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> freaking out, you know? And so I'm like, okay, how can we all get together? And there's a couple of these guys that, that I wanted to work with for a while that have kind of blown me off, like they're high end dentists or whatever that have kind of not blown me off they're busy. Like nobody, who cares about me? So I think that if you've just started and you've already been working on these alliance with businesses, mm. you're in a unique, like really good position because you're going to be able to like, what are they going to need coming out of this? They're going to need marketing. Like everybody's going to be spending on marketing because they're, they've got to get their business going. So I think if you've just started and you're in business to business, wow, how, how great. And so to what Catherine was saying is maybe you just on a human level, hey, you know, I was thinking of teaming up with a couple of businesses and taking some food into, you know, a homeless shelter or whatever. Are you want to be down for that? I'll put it up on my feed. We can all do it together, put it all up on our feed, tag each other, whatever. But on that human level, just getting in and, and helping and seeing being a helper. And then they want to work with somebody that's like that. That's just a thought that I that I did with my own. Uh, clients who have businesses. I'm just like, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this thing. Do you guys, are you in? And every single one of them, like we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in. Oh, I love that. That's great. That's great. So in next question, do you have another question for us, Ronan? Alice is Ronan's great. Sorry, question. Mary, I'm back. Yeah. No, I do have a question. So there seems that the message I'm getting from all you guys is, you know, stop selling and sort of build relationships and show in your community. Mm -hmm. However, there's some people who, who, who are saying, well, what do I do? So if, if I had sessions booked in for the sales session, should I reach out to them and offer them, well, do you want to do a virtual viewing or, or not? Or should we, should we tr postpone that? Or what's, what's your attitude to that? Well, and I think I've said this and I'll say this again, I, we're not in that position yet. We actually still have people coming in this week and we are practicing everything. We're not overlapping appointments. We've sent this message out to all of our clients. So 
we are still in that place. It could change, like I said, within the hour. We are still reaching out, offering virtual consultations for clients who are telling us that we're working on a commission for the spring or early summer. We are doing sales sessions online. That's what we're doing right now. And of course, if people say, I just can't deal with it right now, that's no problem. I'm never using the word cancel and I cannot stress this enough. We are repositioning it, we're postponing it, we're rescheduling it. Do not use the word cancel, especially those of us who will work in events, if you're in weddings or you do schools or events, come at it with what can we do to reposition this, reschedule this, postpone this. When we use Absolutely. the word cancel, if, if it's I, if I can ch chime in yeah. on, on that Please, one, Brian. on the events side of things and, and the weddings, um, my hope is that these are not cancellations. These are postponements. Um, the business is going to come back. Um, they may not be in the time scale that we were we were thinking of. Um, school prom season here in Scotland is the first of two or three weeks in June. Um, and at the moment, uh, UK is talking about a potential 12-week period, which takes us just to the end of my prom season. Um, <laughs> Who knows that, but there's a lot of, somebody said before, there's a lot of prom dresses have been bought. There's a lot of suits and kilts in Scotland. Um, uh, there's venues have been booked. None of us are going to want to bypass the opportunity to either use these, use the venues, get the, get the photographs. Um, so my hope is rather than a cancellation and a loss of business, this is just a postponement of business. Um, and the more that we continue to be visible, we're going to be the ones that they come back to. Uh, um, weddings, etc. you reassure your clients, you know, um, there's a lot of talk. Do I go contractual on this and say, well, sorry, if you want to rebook, if you want to postpone, stick with your clients, stick with them. Um, you don't want to be the wedding photographer that screwed your client. Mm -hmm. you, re you really don't because reputation is going to go one way, uh, direction um there's a chat on this chat mike curtis thanks mike for your comments i've really been enjoying them um people want companies that operate like peoples we're not corporate we're people and and people do business with people uh and the more relational that we get with those people saying look we're hurting as well you guys are hurting what can we do to help you the chances are that the answer is going to come back well what can i do to help you brian or exactly. what can i do that I agree. And I, and I think that's so incredibly valid. And this is something that I, I will say that, and I've, I've shared like in some of my, with some of the studios that I, that I consult with is that guys, we're here where we are, but we're going to postpone. And yeah, we may have to forgo the summer vacation or shorten our holiday break or what have you, because we're going to probably be doubling up or tripling up on our work going forward, because that's what we're going to have to do to recoup. But if we're prepared for that and we're planning and strategizing for that, I think we can do it. And so postponing, repositioning, rescheduling, but being prepared to double up and work a little bit harder for the you know next quarter or, or fourth quarter into the first quarter of next year, I think we will recoup the revenue that we're losing right now. Now that's, that's my opinion. Um, and I don't know if that's correct, but we'll see. Um, I think we have time for a few more questions. Yeah, I have something to that. Sure. J just a couple of things. I think it's really important not to look desperate. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to deal with people that are desperate. They want to deal with people that are ahead of what they do. Um, and it's all about thinking about things differently. I mean, the truth is I'm far too lazy to do a prom session. It's just okay. not going to happen. But we do do a thing called Don't Forget the Dress, where, you know, girls, proms are new, really, relatively new in the UK. We certainly didn't have them when I was in school. Um, and, you know, we're finding clients now that are spending eight, nine, a thousand pounds on a dress and all the accoutrements. And they're sometimes, forgive me, Brian, wanting a little bit more than event photography. So we came up last year with this, this don't forget the dress scenario, where we give them, in essence, their own taste of a fashion shoot. So it's a, it's a more one-to-one -one scenario mm -hmm. where we're looking at, uh, at maybe a higher average yield because we're giving a, um, a more in-depth service than event photography allows. But sometimes 
when you've got a problem, you just have to look at it from the opposite side and see what can be built and what can be salvaged and what can be, be saved. Now, in, I don't know if it's the same where you are, but in the UK, there are people that desperately still need to generate revenue and generate income. And, um, you know, one of the, the keys that I've said to the people that have been speaking to me is not to look desperate, but to offer the service. You know, sure. if people want to make their own decisions to come in and have a newborn shoot done or a family portrait. The one thing I'm absolutely certain about is as the crisis and the pandemic dies down, the great thing it will have done for our industry is once more re-established how important recording emotional connections in portraits is. Right. And the more we share that, don't you agree? The more that we share that, the, the more likely. So going off of that, um, thank you, Damien. So going off of that, Darty, do you want to kind of point out something that we can do on social media to keep keeping that message out there, but not constantly asking for business? Because there's a fine line there. And I think we can use social media to do this. But what would you recommend? I recommend everything everybody's already said. <laughs> 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 no, seriously, it's a bit no. of a panel. And, yeah, and somebody said in the comments that this is stuff that we should have been doing all the time, and I agree with that. Mm. That's what that is what engaging post is, and when people engage with you, that's when you get seen, um, and that's when they want to do business with you because you're you're putting out there engaging posts. You're not always just selling yourself. Now, do you have to sell yourself sometimes? Absolutely. Do you still have to market your business? Absolutely. But. We want to be able to do things that are connecting us with the clients. And I think that's important. And I think a, a lot of this stuff that everybody's been talking about is exactly what you should do. And you should build those into posts and, you know, being there for your community, be there for your clients. And um, I'm going to jump over here to the questions real quick. Cause somebody said, what's an example of a post that somebody would right. like to save. Um, yes. A good example of that would be, uh, let's just say, you've got kids at home. And so you could post something like here. I think Marnie actually said that with her PDF. Here are the top 10 things that you can do while you're at home with your kids. That is a post um, that you could put out on social media that people would want to save it because they're going to want to come back to it later and look at it again. Has nothing to do with your photography business. Like Marnie said, I thought that was brilliant. Um, you know, but it, gets that relationship going with your future clients or your current clients um, and starts building that relationship now so that when we get there in the future, they're, they're there for us at that point as well. So. Thank you, Darty. Thank you. Sure. Um, guys, I know we're going to, we're going to end here in a few minutes. Any, I just wanted to Kira, any closing comments on, um, you know, be, obviously we're all giving the same message, be positive, all these things, connect with businesses, stay in touch with your existing clients. But, you know, what about us? I think, you know, Catherine was incredibly candid and so honest. And I so appreciate you because you're in a different position than a lot of us. And I so appreciate it. But, you know, what can we do to kind of check in on ourselves? Thanks. Yeah. You know, I, I got to be honest, guys. And Catherine, thank you for being so candid, uh, candid and, and raw about what's going on up there. I, that, is, that is something that I genuinely fear and have been dealing with uh, for days, just different levels of anxiety and different levels of kind of breaking, freaking out. I've been freaking out. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I've been texting Mary. I'm freaking out. Um, but I just, I think it's really important. It's really important to keep communicating with your people uh, during this time. You know, you need people to talk you down in order for you to stay positive on social media. You know, if you're like me, I've been glued to press conferences for different states, you know, not my state, <laughs> you know, um, and, and it's been really hard. I've been driving my husband crazy, like all those things. And I just, you need, you need to give yourself a break, cut yourself some slack. You don't, I, I, there was a moment where I was panicking, like I wasn't working hard enough to, to start doing things, to get things in line for when things come back. And so I just, you guys, you know, I know we already had the check in with yourself webinar, but I just, I feel like we need to say it one more time here because this is incredibly stressful. This, you are doing enough, no matter how little or how much you're doing, you are doing enough. Give yourself, just breathe and you're going to break down every day like I do, <laughs> but you're going to keep working and you're going to make it through it and we're all going to make it through it. So keep talking. Awesome. Allison, I'm, I'm raising my hand. Um, <laughs> yeah. I really feel like we've been through hard things before. As the, the U.S., we've been through 2000, we've been through 
we've been, we've all, the global has been through 2008. And I know that when it comes to really difficult, scary things um, in your life, uh, both Kara and I have uh, autistic children. Um, and that that has given me a window, a little window into when I used to, when I was raising those children and still am, when I looked long-term and started to fear about, oh my gosh, are they going to be in a home? Oh my gosh, what's going to happen then? What's going to happen then? What's going to happen then? I, could, I would just be in anxiety and panic every single day and in sorrow and mourning for what I didn't have. But if I could look at that little boy with his cute little bowl cut and his blue eyes and that he was right here right now and loving me every single day, I knew that like right now, it's okay. I have a roof over my head. I have a Diet Coke to drink. I have a potty. <laughs> And right yet, there's toilet paper at the moment. And if not, there's some redneck selling it out of the back of his truck down the street for five bucks a roll. But right now, it's okay. And so right now, it's okay to not know what's going to happen because none of us do know. No matter how successful photographers or whatever we've been, none of us know. And everybody's scared. Everybody needs to make money. I saw one of the questions on the thing is like, what if you need to make money right now? Guess what? That's every single person that you're looking at on this screen. We all need to make money right now. And so right now we just have to hold the space that we don't know. But one thing for sure is that nobody's taken away your talent. Nobody's taken away your ability. Nobody's taken away your brain. Nobody's taken away your will to serve and to serve your community and serve your clients. And we're going to get through this and we're going to do it together. Oh my gosh. I'm well, not I'm crying. Stop, stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Steve, you want to bring us home with a couple comments or thoughts from uh, your, your oh, yeah. first thing in the morning for you. So. <laughs> I should be right now. It should be more energetic out of anybody. I've had some sleep. Um, I coached a lot of businesses um, after the earthquakes in Christchurch. And that was devastating for so many people where you know, their homes were collapsed around them and they've lost so many people. Um, I think people just need to know that at the end of all of this, like never before, people will be looking for photography and to reconnect as a family. And we need to just get prepared for the onslaught of these, of what's going to happen. Um, at the end of this because, you know, yes, there are people that are suffering and through Christchurch, they lost everything and nobody thought that they'd be able to recover because nobody had any money. But people somehow find money for what's important to them and what's important to them is their family and the people that they love and the more we can focus on getting ready for helping people reconnect and get things back on track and, and being inspirational um, as an industry, helping people come together and celebrate who they are and allowing people to, you know, to have the opportunity to shine, you know, through some of our social groups. Um, we've had quite a lot of people now setting up groups just, um, as people were saying, tips on how to homeschool, tips on how to relieve boredom. All of these th things help our clients remember us at the end of all of this and, and help our businesses become more human. And like never before, it's time for us to start humanizing photography and making it all about, all about the people, all about our clients, about helping our alliances. Um, in the end, people will always, always value and treasure the core of what's important to them. And that's family. And that's what our industry is all about creating oh that gosh. ability for family to come together and reconnect. That's what's going to happen at the end of all of this. So there will be light at the end of the tunnel. We just need to um, do what we can to survive until it's time that people are calling back on us and, and know that it will happen. Um, we've seen it time and time again at the end of disaster. The first thing people turn to is family, and that's what we have to be about. I love that. And, and would you guys agree that maybe this is kind of – an, you know, an unintended consequence. Let me just throw that out there. But maybe, you know, we've talked so much about keeping in touch and humanizing and, you know, and, and sharing and giving and, and connecting that we're setting a pattern and going forward, lesson learned. We won't wait for the next crisis or epidemic to humanize what we do. We photograph humans. We photograph emotions. We capture these. And I think 
we get so, you know, I, I think somebody, Damien, you started out with maybe that, maybe not in tune with the numbers. I'm overly in tune with my numbers, I think. And maybe I've lost some of that really important humanizing thing that we need. And maybe this is going to be a lesson for all of us moving forward with a lot more grace and um, staying in touch and, and being more in tune with what our clients need. So I love this. I think this has been a fantastic conversation. I cannot thank you guys enough. Um, if this group wants, we will have another panel um, maybe next week or down the road, right, Ronan? I'm gonna throw that back at you and thank you for having us. Absolutely, guys. Look, there's so many people online who are saying their anxiety levels have just gone from here to here. So thank Good. you so much for That's sharing. Awesome. Thank you for making us positive. Yes, it's a challenge. Yes, it's a crisis. But together we can survive this. Together we can rebuild our businesses and together we can prosper again. And I really believe that you making a connection with your community right now will show you as the, hu the human person, the, the, the person who has humanity at their heart in your communities and then people will come and support you. I really believe that. And um, what I'd like to say is thank you so much to the whole panel. They were amazing. We have more stuff coming to you from Think Tank. Um, on Friday, we have Gary Box and his team coming up with strategies to help you financially to survive this crisis. So what should you do right now to save the cash? Because that's what it's all about, guys, is, is cash flow right now and trying to figure out ways to absolutely maximize that cash and hold on to as much of it as we work through this crisis. We also have some people have said they're going to continue to do IPS. Um, so we have Ron Nichols from ProSelect going to do a session on his own on how to do IPS using Zoom and virtually. So for those of you who are still continuing to do IPS, Ron is going to do that and we publish that very, very soon. So there's going to be loads more coming. We've, uh, I think, 10 groups now working on content to bring to you, to help you through this crisis, to survive it, to help you rebuild when this crisis is over and then prosper again. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Thank you, team. Love you all. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Thank you everyone.